again, it's me, Derek, from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to this video all about this. Well, not just the magazine, more specifically this little bit down at the bottom, which tells us what iGEM, which is the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers, have done to our iGEM G11, the unsafe situations procedure for the gas industry. Now, before we get into this video, please can you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you exactly when I upload videos. I think you know by now it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, without further ado, waffling and messing around, you know, we're getting on with it. Now, in this edition of the Gas Engineer, March 2021 edition, Gas Safe have informed us about these changes to IGMG11. And they've done that with this Industry Update 102, which goes through all the changes that have been made to the document. IGEM published these changes on the 15th of January 2021. Now, Gas Safe are giving us to the 15th of April 2021 to actually bring these changes into effect but we can actually start using them now. So we don't have to wait till April, but mind you, we are now the 9th of March, so we haven't got long to wait. So we can start using these changes now. So let's find out exactly what the changes are in communication 1840, or we're gonna commonly know it as the second edition of IGM G11. So uh, let's find out exactly what they are then. Come on then. Are you still listening or have you turned off? Because we're in a few minutes in now, so come on. Now, the IGM G11 unsafe situations procedure is set out in sections. Now, the first changes they've actually made to this regulation document is section one, the actual introduction. And it's been changed at clause 1.9. And you can see I've highlighted the differences here in green. So this is from edition one, page two, and it's still on page two, but this time in edition two. So you can see the changes there. So this clause 1.9 states that IGEM G11 has been drawn up by the gas industry in order to assist competent engineers in meeting their legal duties in accordance with the Gas Safe Installation and Use Regulations 1998, which itself was amended in 2018. And it basically says it's the approved code of practice and guidance for gas engineers to classify unsafe situations correctly. So the general principles of the gas industry unsafe situations procedure, IGMG 11, may be used as a guide to action in premises that fail outside the scope of the gas safe installation and use regulations. So it could actually be used in factories if you wanted to. So it can also be used in geographical areas not covered by the Great Britain edition of the uh, gas industry on safe situations procedure. And this could include Jersey, Guernsey, the Isle of Man and Northern Ireland, which isn't mentioned here, but is mentioned there. So that's the first section that's been amended, which is section one, clause 1.9. Now the next section to have any changes is section two. And you can see there's not much of a change. So this is edition one and this is edition two. We've just got a little bit more text added down at the bottom. So basically section two is scope and it's class 2.2. That states that the priority for gas engineers when encountering an unsafe situation is to safeguard life and property. It's essential that the gas engineers are able to identify gas equipment that presents a danger or potential danger and take prompt corrective actions to eliminate such dangers. So that's basically what we have to do as gas engineers and they've kind of prompted us a little bit down at the bottom. Was a change needed? Hmm. Well, they obviously think it should be. Now the next section to get a change is section four competence and you can see this is from edition one and there's a little bit more added here for edition two 
So, when applying the classifications used in IGM G11, the competent engineer shall be able to justify their rationale based on the situations on site. The examples of the document are not intended to be exhaustive and or definitive, and the final decision in applying classification lies solely with the competent engineer on site following their site-specific risk assessment. So that means no more phoning up your boss and asking them to classify it because if you're self-employed, you have to classify it on your own. But if you're working for somebody now, then you need to be classifying this stuff as you see it, not ringing somebody up who hasn't seen the situation and letting them deal with it and walking away from it. You have to classify it yourself as the competent engineer. Now, the next thing to get a little bit of an update, which isn't much, is Clause 6, which is dealing with the unsafe situations. So, Clauses 6.1 and 6.2 include the guidance to complete a warning notice, which shall emphasise the words danger do not use, regardless of the format used. So, we have to use just one label now, uh, not the at-risk and the ID ones like we used to do. It's just that one label we use. And we must obtain a signature from the gas user or the responsible person and record it as a record of receipt. And before we leave site, we must make sure that the gas user or the responsible person understands the situation and what they must do. And again, before leaving site, a copy shall be issued to the gas user or responsible person and you shall keep a record yourself as record of receipt. And if no one is present, leave a copy on site and alert any future user of the dangers of not to use the appliance or appliances. So that is the changes to clause six. And you can see there's not massive difference in them. Okay, just a few words are changed and a few little extra bits added. Other than that, nothing massive between the two. Now, I guess one of the biggest changes we've got is the actual uh, clause eight, which is RIDOR, unsafe gas work and the theft of gas reporting. So you can see here, this is the new edition compared to the old edition. But on the new edition, we've had some slight changes and we've had an introduction to this appendix seven, which I'll show you in a minute. Now the change has been made to clause 8.3 and it has been revised to ensure competency with the current legislation and states that RIDOR regulation 11.2 requires registered gas businesses or engineers to report any gas fittings including appliances and flues or ventilation that are used with the appliances that are dangerous to such an extent that they have caused and are likely to cause death, unconsciousness, or taking a person to hospital due to the design, construction, manner of installation, modification, or incorrect servicing of a gas fitting that could have resulted in an accidental leakage of gas or incomplete combustion of gas or inadequate removal of products of combustion of gas. This is commonly referred to as poor workmanship or design. Now this is a flow chart that's been introduced. This is Appendix 7. And we can follow this flow chart. So this is the start. And down here is the finish. And we can follow our way around and see why we need to report it. Gas safe always love a flow chart. So it's dead easy to follow, dead straightforward. So technically we shouldn't be making any mistakes when we're identifying faults. Yeah, I wish that was true though. So another change has been made to clause 8.5, which has been added to detail how we should report to under RIDOR. And clause 8.6 has been included to provide guidance on how to and whom to report unsafe situations due to the poor workmanship that are not reportable under RIDOR. Clause 8.7 provides guidance around the theft of gas, which has just been included. So that's the changes to Clause 8, which is uh, RIDOR, unsafe gas work and the theft of gas reporting.
Now we've had a look at the bits at the front where nobody really reads, but you should do because of the big changes we've had there. So uh, let's have a look at section 9 where it tells us how we're going to categorise the faults and let's see what's been changed there, if anything. So let's have a look at this section 9 then, table 1. So table 1 contains examples of types of situations that are immediately dangerous or at risk. The table is not exhaustive and individual circumstances may require different actions to be taken. Therefore, engineers shall exercise their engineering judgment and be able to justify the classification rationale based on the situations on the site. Actions should be within their areas of competence and where there is doubt, they must seek further advice. So a header added to each table page now details the RIDO requirements to be considered. So you can see this is the top of the old pages and now this is what's been added down here to help engineers with RIDO. So let's have a look at these first two revisions. They are table reference 3.6 and 3.7. And you can see again, edition one is at the top and edition two is at the bottom. So in edition one, this was page 21 and edition two is moved to page 24. So if we look at 3.6 first, so the note has been revised to state that notify the responsible person that access to and a means to operate the ECV is required by law. And at 3.7, the notes have been revised to provide guidance to make a safe, as described in IGEM UP1, a series of procedures. So that's basically what was changed on 3.6 and 3.7. So only minor changes, and as you can see, categorising them as at risk has not changed. So that's the first ones. Let's have a look at the next. Next one we're going to look at is 3.11. And basically the guidance notes for this table reference have been revised. So I've actually highlighted these in green. So the difference between this section and this section, you can see just basically it says pipe work should be supported to the appropriate standards. And there's been a few little changes here, but the main one is they've added another section. So it says pipe work where the position or lack of support makes damage and or accidental release highly foreseeable. And we will be classing them as at risk. So that's the changes for 3.11. Let's take a look at the next one. Now the next one is 6.6. .6. And basically, this section had been revised to provide guidance for room sealed chimney flue systems, which are damaged, insecure, inadequately supported, and are using incorrect jointing methods to such an extent that it may cause it to become unsafe and or the breach of integrity is likely. So it's basically reworded. So this is the old one. They just reworded and added a few little bit more things on there to help you when you're classifying flues, such as flues which go through lofts, which aren't actually supported at all. So we would be at risk in them. And obviously if we had products of combustion coming out into the loft, then we'll be IDing it. So the risk hasn't changed, or the categorization hasn't changed, but they've just added a few more little bits in there to help you. Oh, let's have a look at the next one. So this is the biggest change you're going to see in IGMG 11 is 7.2 because in edition 1 it was completely blank and in, in version 2 or edition 2, 7.2 you can see we've actually got some writing in there. So 7.2, this situation has been revised to provide guidance where there has been a breach of ream sealed appliance integrity caused by missing or damaged seals. So you can see here that number one, flue gas analyzer sample point cap missing, damaged, regardless of evidence of leaking of products of combustion is, you can see, ID. And then if we've got air inlet sample point cap missing, damaged, no evidence of leakage of combustion, then we're classing that as at risk. 
And then if the grommets forming part of the combustion circuit missing is damaged with no evidence of leaking a product's combustion. So that's your seals where your cable grommets come in or hole in the casing or something like that. We would class that as at risk. So that's got a big change 7.2. Nothing in the old one, plenty written in the new one. And I actually make point of this in one of my other videos where I talk about um, pro problems with room sealed appliance flues. So that's 7.2. Let's have a look at the last one. Now you can see from the last one, 13.9 did not exist in edition one. It's been added to edition two, but it's LPG. So if you do do LPG, then 13.9 is for you. So this situation has been included in table one to provide guidance where existing single stage LPG regulators are without overpressure shutoff protection. Where the regulator is known or suspected to be 10 years old or greater, or where such a single stage regulator without the overpressure shutoff protection exhibits evidence of significant environmental degradation. So that's the main changes to table one. And uh, let's sum up, shall we? So you can see with the new one, iGEM G11 edition two, it's not that many different changes. Like I would say, the main one being we've gone back to engineers making a judgment. Riddle reporting has slightly changed. Because basically said in the old book, if it was ID, it was Riddle reported. Um, that's what disappoints me about this book. For new trainees into our industry, why does this book not say whether you need to Riddle it or not? Like the old one used to do. Made it so much easier. Uh, and then they've added this little flow chart at the back, this uh, Appendix 7, to help us. Um, so, yeah, not massive changes in there. But don't forget, you always need to have the uh, up-to-date copy, which you can just download from GasSafe. And you can also download it from iGEM free as well. So we need it. You have a download it or get yourself a hard copy like this one is. So if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. So all I've got left to say is thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and if you want me to uh, keep you up to date with more stuff from GasSafe, then just pop it down in the comments below. So I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.